Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Directional Light Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion where we've got a camera, a merge, a render, and a couple shapes set up. And again, we see nothing because uh, we have no light in our scene. So let's go ahead and add a Directional Light. And input it into our merge. As soon as we do, we see we've got some light going on. Now, the directional light node, again, will give us a little uh, gizmo in here. And uh, let me go ahead and zoom in. If you can see, our gizmo's got lines. And what this node is actually doing is it's creating directional light. And with this node, it doesn't matter where it is in your uh, scene, it's gonna cast the same light. So if we go to our render node, and we go to our transform, you can see I'm changing this. I can make this 70,000 again, and it's still gonna look the same. What is gonna change is our rotation. So if I change my X, my Y, in my Z rotation, it'll change the direction of the light. So let's go ahead and change this so we're getting some shadows. And if we go to our controls up here, we have whether our light is enabled or not enabled. We can change our color. We can change our color channels independently. And we have this additional option down here for shadows. And our first checkbox is to enable or disable them. So if you notice, we're not seeing any shadows. But if I go to my render node and change from software renderer to hardware renderer, we got shadows. So let's jump back into our light node. Now up top, we can change our shadow color. We can pick whatever color we want that shadow to be. We can uh, change it per channel. And then we have density. So. This just tells us how dense that shadow is going to be. For your shadow map size, this just determines what uh, bitmap size your shadows are going to use. So if I reduce them way down, you can see we got the uh, Minecraft effect going on. But if I raise them, we have higher quality shadow maps. And right here, the shadow map proxy. This is used for... Uh, downscaling your proxies for your shadows. So right now it's at 0.5, which means our proxy is going to uh, render at half of our shadow map size. If I moved it to one, it'll be full. Our multiplicitive and additive bias, what this does is it helps with any shadows that are fighting your Z depth. So if we had multiple items in here, and you find your shadows aren't falling on those items as they should be, you can uh, change up your bias to bring those shadows in or out. And your additive bias just helps this multiplicitive bias rein those shadows in a little more. So the only time you're really going to use this, like I said, is if you have multiple things in here and your shadows are kind of fighting each other and not rendering on objects that should be impacted by shadows from other objects. So just play with these two buttons and uh, you'll be able to rein those in. Your non-transmissive materials. What this is for is normally your shadows run on an RGBAZ channel. So it's using all those channels. If we hit non-transmissive material, It'll just run off that Z channel and kind of save you a little memory when you're rendering. And your sample quality is exactly that, whether it's low or medium. Your shadow weight will change the weight of that shadow. So if we uh, kind of zoom in here, we can see uh, we got some aliasing going on. But if we change our weight up a little bit, it smooths it out. And we have our near far clip for our shadows. 
and down here we have softness right now it's set to none we also have constant so i can change up the constant value of our softness of our shadows we have variable which will allow us to control the spread of our shadow the minimum softness and the filter size of that softness and we've also got variable fast which pretty much just allows you to change the filter size and it's automatically adjusting these spreads and minimum softness to be uh, less intensive on your computer so that is the directional light node i will see you in the next node breakdown